Good evening, everyone. We're going to give people a few minutes to get logged in here, and then we will get started with our presentation. So sit tight, and thanks for joining us. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's program, Defining Your Career Trajectory, a DSO Experience. Tonight's presentation is brought to you by ASDA's Career Compass and sponsored by Heartland Dental. Before we begin, please note that all attendees are muted to reduce background noise during the program. On the right side of your screen, you should be able to see a control panel. You will also be able to see at the bottom of your control panel an area for submitting questions. You will be able to submit questions for the presenters throughout the program by typing those questions into that box at any time. We'll address those questions at the end of the presentation, as well as provide contact details for all of our presenters. Career Compass is ASDA's online career, career tool to help prepare you for graduation. Find information to help you transition from dental student to practicing dentist or to a resident in this area of our website. ASDA is excited to work with experts in the field, like our friends at Heartland Dental, to develop new programs and resources for you. Please visit Career Compass at any time to explore all it has to offer. I would now like to introduce today's moderator. Kathy Tellez is a Heartland Dental Campus recruiter. She's based in San Diego, California, and I'd like to welcome Kathy to tonight's presentation. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Kendra, for kicking off this webinar. On behalf of myself and our panelists, I wanna quickly thank ASA for having us here tonight and thank you to all the webinar attendees out there who are taking the time out of their busy schedule to be with us today. Uh, we're so excited. Um, anyways, my name is Kathy Tellis, campus recruiter at Heartland Dental based out of San Diego, California. I've been with Heartland Dental for a little bit over a year and I love what I do. As a campus recruiter, I've had the privilege to travel the country to find outstanding future dentists would be a perfect fit for Heartland Dental. Before coming to Heartland, I worked in higher education for over 15 years and helped my students define what they wanted their career trajectory to look like after graduation. Today, we have three very successful supported doctors of Heartland Dental who are two, three, and five years out of dental school. Tonight, you will hear their thoughts on a variety of topics that have molded them into the dentist they are today. 
So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to quickly introduce our panel of supported doctors. Dr. Reich. I'm Dr. Reich. Hi. How are you? Very yeah, well, good. Hi, Kathy. Hi, everybody out there. Hi there. And then also Dr. Nelson. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so let's get started introducing these guys here. Uh, Dr. Jordan Reich, uh, he's an alum from the University of Missouri and has been practicing dentistry for four years. His patient care mission is building meaningful and lasting relationships with my patients through high quality dental care, education, trust, and improvement of oral and overall health. Dr. Reich was born in St. Louis, Missouri and loves to spend time outdoors, play sports, and a proud owner of a Maine Coon cat named Mufasa. I love that. <laughs> Currently, he practices at Arch Dental of Manhattan in New York, New York. Welcome, Dr. Reich. Thank you. Dr. Jaya Nelson. Hi there. Dr. Jaya Nelson is an alum from Meharry Medical College School of Dentistry and she's been practicing dentistry for over five years. Her patient care mission is to educate my patients in their oral health and to ensure that they always leave our office with a smile. Dr. Nelson is an active member of her church, enjoys spending time with her family and playing a variety of different sports. She's currently practicing at Danville Family Dental Care in Danville, Illinois. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. And last but not least, Dr. Alyssa Finney. She's an alum from A.T. Still University of Missouri and has been practicing dentistry for three years. Her patient care mission is to help and serve as many people in need as possible. My favorite part of dentistry is the patient interaction. I want to be very involved in my community, not just as dentists, but as a friend to my patients. Dr. Finney loves the simple things in life. When she isn't surrounded by her friends and family, she loves to play with her dog, Louie, and enjoys almost uh, any outdoor activity. She currently practices at Creative Smiles at Wing Haven in O'Fallon, Missouri. Welcome, Dr. Finney. Thank you. Awesome, guys, thank you so much. So let's go ahead and get started with the panel of questions. Um, this question is for all of the doctors and we'll kick it off with you, Dr. Reich. Uh, what factors did you most consider when determining what job to take out of dental school? Um, so in dental school, I made a decision that I wanted to do a residency. So I knew my first step right out of dental school um, multiple reasons. I wanted hospital experience, but I also knew I wanted to go to New York eventually. And New York has a requirement of a residency or an AEGD after dental school. So I knew my first step. So I guess the better question would be what was I going to do after residency? Because I had no idea. Um, that's when luckily the DSO Heartland Dental came into my life. Um, one of the attending doctors in my residency program actually was a doctor employed by Heartland before joining the team. Um, and when we were sitting around talking, what's our next steps? I was kind of probably how many of you are going, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, he suggested I look into Heartland Dental. Um, his reasonings were the continuing education for a young doctor. Um, when I saw they had availabilities in New York, I reached out to a recruiter and I said, I want to be in this part of the country, but I'm also interested in all the benefits that come along with Heartland. And they just were incredibly flexible, helped me get to the location that I wanted to set up a practice. And um, it's been history ever since, and I'm very happy with that decision. That's wonderful. Wow, so you you did your AGD right after school, then um, then joined us after you completed that. Yes, so Heartland has been my only kind of private world experience in dentistry. Wow, that's excellent. And what about you, Dr. Nelson? 
Yes, um, I knew I wanted to do a residency as well. Um, my mainly reason for me was I wanted to work on my speed. Um, also, I wanted to kind of work with um, more people. Um, so I went to a residency called St. Elizabeth in Washington, D.C., and that's a mental hospital. So I wanted to make sure I could work with mental um, illness. Um, when I had patients come in, I felt like if I can work with them, I can work with anybody. Um, so that was an experience I wanted. Uh, once I I finished there, I would say that I didn't know where I was going to go next. I knew I wanted to come back to my hometown, um, but I didn't know if I really was going to. Um, I ended up getting two offers from two different DSOs, and I decided to go with Heartland mainly because of the opportunities they gave you. Like Dr. said, the education is awesome. You want to always get continued education, and when you don't have to pay for it, it's even better. Um, but it was great opportunity for me to come into this office um, as in my hometown. So I'm excited to be here, but I definitely did have a job opportunity right when I finished um, and it happened where I was able to choose between two. Thank you. Wow, that's wonderful. And and Dr. Finney, what about for you? Um, well, I'm the opposite of those two. I knew right away that I was done with school and I couldn't wait to start working. Um, <clears throat> so I was actually a dental assistant for Heartland Dental before I went to dental school and I worked for some excellent dentists and I just got to see um, how much they grew due to the CE courses. I mean, they did IV sedation, implants. Um, <clears throat> it was just so appealing to me that I knew right then and there, I didn't need a residency to, to get um, the skills that I wanted. Um, so right away, I knew Heartland was for me for the CE, and the CE started within the first month that I started working with Heartland. Uh, by the first year, I was doing molar root canals, just things that were unthinkable when you were getting ready to graduate from dental school. So that was huge for me. And another thing was location. I knew exactly where I wanted to practice. Um, I had actually signed a contract in one state and ended up not going to that state. And so I immediately picked another location and it was no problem. I had another job lined up within a month. That's amazing, wow. And just for everyone who's on this call, a DSO is a dental support organization, um, just so that um, if you don't know what that acronym stands for, that's what DSO stands for. And Kathy, can I add one more thing before we move to the next oh, topic? Sure. Absolutely. So I forgot to mention in undergraduate school, I was actually a manage like a business management major. And so I also like I learned enough about business to know I didn't want to do some of that stuff as far as running a dental practice is concerned. And um, so it's not that I don't know anything about it, it's that I know enough to know I don't like to do balance sheets and all those kinds of things. So that's a huge plus for me that I've been able to focus on just clinical dentistry, which is what I really enjoy doing. Wow, that's amazing input. Thank you so much. And, and Dr. Finney, what was one of the biggest adjustments you had to make after dental school? Um, so I have two. The first one is learning how to spit in hygiene exams. That's something in dental school that you don't really have. You don't have to work with hygienists. Um, and so coming in the very first day, I had two full-time hygienists that were running their own columns, and then I was running my columns. So um, I had to really give my team um, permission to keep me going and being like, okay, doctor, this would be a good time, you know, come check, a, come do this hygiene exam, why this patient's getting numb. So it really is just sitting down with your team and, and realizing that it's, it's okay to not finish a procedure before you go check a hygiene exam you need to find those breaks it's good to let the patient take a break it's good to let you take a break but just kind of learning that flow of an everyday office life was a huge change for me and the second one is just humbling yourself um, you're going to have failures you're gonna have angry and upset patients you're gonna have upset um, co-workers and staff and it's just really something that you can't take personally you just kind of have to to learn how to adapt and and just humble yourself because it's gonna happen and then you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna do the same thing tomorrow so those are two big things for me 
So you didn't have any um, irate customers or patients? <laughs> or actually, you probably my, no, no. Well. My first day, my first day practicing, I had a failed implant. Um, that was like one of the very first patients that walked in the door, and I had absolutely no idea what to do. So I just almost sat there and cried with the patient because I didn't know what else to do. So it happens. Wow, that's and, and thank you for that story. Wow, um, Dr. Rice and Dr. Nelson. At Heartland Dental, we say the phrase, Dr. Led. What does that phrase mean to you and why is that important? So let's go ahead and start with you, Dr. Reich. Um, so when I was thinking about this question, um, it, I go back to when I first was hired by Heartland. The president, I don't, the owner, CEO, the man who started Heartland is named Dr. Workman. And the key to that is he's a doctor. Um, so this is a very large company now, but it wasn't always that way. And um, Dr. Workman spent quality time with me as a new doctor hire in Effingham, Illinois, where the headquarters is. Um, his personal touch on things, but it gave me confidence knowing that although this is a large company in size, um, it's really structured all from uh, the mindset of a dentist because he's the one who started the company, he still is completely involved with the company. And there's, it's hard to get into the, all the details that you would see once you're hired with Heartland, but it really is there to support the dentists who then support the team. So everyone wins in the situation, but um, with Dr. Workman starting the company as a dentist for dentists, it really shines through this in this, in this company. And Dr. Nelson? Yes, um, I definitely agree. It's great to have a doctor that started the company. Um, Dr. Led definitely means that they give you the opportunity to lead this office. Um, for me, I know I thought about private practice, but I, I didn't really want to do the business side right away. Um, so this allows me to run it like I'm, it's like my own private practice, but it's my office, but I've got a lot of support. So Dr. Led, meaning that you have that support, but you can still be the leader. You can still um, do what you um, expect to do clinically, and you're able to lead also your team and have the support from more than just um, your doctors. You get support from other areas too. So I like the fact that um, Heartland Dental does offer um, the support and also from your doctor side as well as um, other employees. Yeah, that's fantastic. Dr. Workman being a dentist himself and building this organization, it really does um, lead to this type of culture that we have at Heartland Dental. Um, and going back to that support, as you were talking about, um, um, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Finney, uh, you know, I know you're in a two-doctor practice right now um, that created a different dynamic when it comes to leadership and how you overcome obstacles. Can you speak on this a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I actually started off as a single doctor practice and um, there was an office right next door. And about a year into my career, we decided to go ahead and merge those two offices. So um, we went, I went from an office of six to an office of 21. Um, and, you know, my partner doctor has been practicing in that office for 15 years. So those were her patients. There's a lot of loyalty there. I'm the newbie coming in. Um, and so right away, we just sat down and made a commitment that our relationship was going to be the most important in the practice. So we have monthly meetings where her and I will just go have dinner. We kind of talk about how things are going in the practice, what are um, every year we sit down and do goals together for the office and then personal goals. Um, she really is kind of like my my wife at work is what I call her. <laughs> she would say the same thing about me. I mean, we really are truly like in such a um, a good relationship because our team feeds off of that. We have to be on the same page. Diagnostically, we sat down and just kind of went through our treatment planning for predictability, just so our, our entire team knew our expectations. Um, and we tell them to hold us accountable to those. If one of us is kind of going off task, like, we, we give our team permission to kind of address that with us. Um, 
but a, another thing for for young doctors coming in is don't don't come in acting like you know it all. I still every day will listen to my partner doctor um, do comprehensive exams and how she talks with patients and how she does her treatment plans. I learn something every single day. So just don't be in the mindset that you're done learning. Uh, you just started. And I learn something new every day from that relationship. So just value it and grow from it and understand that there's going to be days where you're going to disagree. But it's it's those days that if you take those and really take the time to sit down and communicate about it, you're, you're, you're going to go a long way. I love that. Um, true um, sharing of the goals, you know, your true partnership, humbling of yourself when you are working with um, someone else. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Reich, could you list some of the opportunities you've encountered that you didn't realize DSOs offered? For example, yeah. like mentorship, community involvement? Sure. So, so when I'm when I first heard DSO or dental support organization, the 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 I, I kind of knew, okay, they'll take care of hiring and firing and all this other stuff. So I knew that. The things that I didn't realize would be opportunities, which I'm very happy are, um, were a couple of things. The first one is you you become part of a, a, a huge network of doctors here. I think we have almost, I think 1,500 we're up to of supported doctors by Heartland Dental. Um, and within those 1500 doctors, we have a, what we call the all doctor email. Um, literally one came in today that I thought was going to be a great example for today. I'm, I'll pull it up right now. So this goes out to 1500 doctors who are all here to support each other. Um, the title is a vol's tooth patient coming in at 1 PM exclamation mark. Um, so this is a newer doctor who's about to encounter something they've never run into before. They shout out an email and there's been a couple doctors with full responses to different types of ways to handle the situation. And just as a new doctor, being able to have that to fall back on gives you a ton of confidence that you may not know that you needed, but it's nice to have. So that's one of the major opportunities that I didn't know about until I joined. Um, the other one is the we've been talking about the CE or continuing education. Heartland has put on some of the greatest courses I've ever taken. And Dr. Finney, I think said, you'll be doing molar endo in your first year. Totally true. I, I'm looking for endo before I used to be like, oh my gosh, there's endo on my schedule. What are we gonna do? Now I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to do this. Cause when I talk to some peers and this is not putting them down or anything, this is just, I've had more continuing education opportunities than they have. Um, I would say I'm probably, and this is not just facetious, I'm probably, five, six years more advanced than other colleagues, friends of mine that I've done, a, that I've graduated in dental school strictly from an educational experience. So um, clinical skills and leadership skills, um, they, they, they make you a, a well-rounded doctor, not just a, what we used to call a molar mechanic who only does technical teeth. You learn a lot about communication, how to work as a team, leadership, um, personalities, it's really amazing what this company ends up offering you, um, aside from the obvious ones you would think of. I love that. I saw um, Dr. Nelson and Dr. Finney both like nodding their heads. Do you guys have an experience that you guys want to share about that? Go ahead, Dr. Nelson. Okay, sure. Um, I would say that um, the Communicate. I mean, communication is very important, and that's something you don't get in dentistry, so that was really helpful. But I would say community work, too. Um, we do a free dental day, and um, that I love that because I always love to give back to my community. And then this year, um, I did a free dental day, but then also I did an event for the homeless, and now it's going. it went national, and we call it a We Care. So it's like you can come up with your own ideas, and then the whole company gets behind you and now they're like oh my goodness we can now sponsor homeless people and we gave free um homeless supplies to them just different things um goodie bags we cook for them but then also i was able to do dental work so it's just opportunities more than just dentistry because you have a heart um, most dentists do have a heart. We love to make people smile, but we also love to interact with them. That's another reason why you go into dentistry instead of like a physician, because you are able to 
um, build that rapport with your patients. So I love the fact that I may, I'm able to give back to my community with the support of Heartland Dental. Wow, that's amazing. And and Dr. Finney, for you. Oh my gosh, I they summed it up so well. I, I love what Dr. Nelson said. Uh, what I love about Heartland is for being part of a DSO family. I mean, they are so much about giving back to the community. We give charity donations all the time. We have patients that come in that are part of different organizations and programs, and we help sponsor certain events um, for the local schools around our area. We go to different um, like career fairs at some of those schools. We love to go into the preschools and the daycares close by and give out um, free toothbrushes for the kids. I, it truly, every month in my office, we do some sort of uh, community outreach. So like this month, going back in August, we actually, if the kids came in and colored a coloring bus, that we a coloring page of a coloring bus, we're drawing and they will win a uh, backpack. So it's just, it is really important. And Heartland <laughs> says nothing about it. They totally support us completely. Um, but again, we get to come up with our own ideas. So we truly feel like it's our office and we get to make those decisions. Wow, I love all of those stories, guys. Thank you. Uh, now, not all jobs are perfect. What is one thing you would like to change about your current situation, Dr. Nelson? Um, right now, I'm in an office where I'm the only doctor, um, but I am missing a front desk. We call those business assistants, um, so BA. Um, so I'm missing one of those. So I would love to have a full team. Um, a full team for me is two dental assistants, um, two hygienists, and then right now I have one business assistant and then a practice manager. Okay, gotcha. And then Dr. Finney, for you. Um, so this is a great problem to have, but we've actually outgrown our space. So uh, we have 13 operatories and we've just completely outgrown that. So we have six full-time hygienists and we could not get a new patient in for at least two months. So we know it's time to expand and to grow. Uh, so that is something we've started the conversation with Heartland about um, possibly growing our, our office and growing it by adding another doctor and even more hygienists. So what a blessing. You can feel free to fly up <laughs> or my way too. I mean, oh, sometimes. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I yeah, agree. That's, sorry. <laughs> that's awesome. Thirteen operatories and growing. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, Dr. Nelson, what is one level of support you have received that you did not realize you needed when you started working for a DSL? Um, I will say that I needed this though. I needed support because I was going to be the only doctor in my office, but I didn't realize how it was going to be very supportive, like down the street. So my mentor uh, for um, Heartland Dental was down the street and he literally every month sat down with me um, during lunchtime and let me bring cases and i did that for like the first three months and that's very helpful because sometimes you're sitting in there and it's like there's no other doctor to kind of tell you which route to go um no support um in the office at that moment but then i had a doctor that was down the street they do do the emails. I'm a person, I really don't get on the emails too much. Um, it's just, I just don't do it. But I, to have someone closer to me that I can confine in and be like, hey, this is what's going on. I'm a little shy when it comes to the emails. Um, so, and then I get overwhelmed sometimes too, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but overall, it was very helpful to have a mentor down the street to support me. And I'm very happy to have that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, now, really quickly, um, as far as, you know, going back, if, you, if this is for all of the doctors, if you guys could go back and tell yourself your first day of dental school, what would that be? What is one thing that you would tell yourself on your first day of dental school? What would that be? And I'll start with Dr. Finney. Oh my gosh. Um, first, I have to tell you all, it's worth it. It truly is worth it. I remember getting to my second semester of fourth year and being like, did I just make the biggest mistake of my life? I'm not even sure I like dentistry anymore. Um, just because school is tough. Boards are tough. Um, everything about it is, is just tough. So the first thing someone told me on my first day was, you don't know what you don't know. And there's so much 
truth in that. Um, and then slowly you'll start to realize that you start to find out that you know what you don't know <laughs> and that scares you more. But uh, learn as much as you can clinically while you're in school. Pay attention to the dental materials. Pay attention to to the hand skills. Just just perfecting those because uh, what you'll come to find out is that is the easy part of dentistry. The clinical stuff, I don't sweat it at all. I don't get nervous about it. Um, it's so natural now. So that's really what I learned. That's what dental school is supposed to be used for is just to get the foundation um, because what I grow on every day is every patient that walks in my chair is going to be a different scenario. I have to learn how to deal with, with different personalities, different patients. I have to learn how to deal with my staff. I have to learn how to be a boss. Um, there's so much more that goes into it that dental school just can't prepare you for. So the one thing that just really pay attention and dive in and learn as much as you can clinically. And I have to agree with you. Um, the clinic, like know the clinic as much as you can because it is so much more to learn once you get out. Um, and it's just, you get overwhelmed a little bit. One thing though with um, Heartland Dental, they have so much support that they find ways that you don't get under overwhelmed because they understand that they want you to focus on clinical. So if you can really get all your clinical now, that would be great for you trying to learn as much as you can and know that you do know some things and it's like riding a bike, but be prepared to fail. Um, that is normal. Um, we do that every day. I mean, there's moments where you be like, oh, dang, I could have did that a little bit better. And then there's moments like, oh, that's textbook root canal. So just know that um, it's try and error. Um, you're learning from your mistakes and that it's still doable. And if you do that, you, you'll be okay. So keep pushing. Don't give up. Um, it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. So um, keep on pushing until you reach your goal which is to become a doctor. I love that. And for those who are still on, I just wanted to let you know that Dr. Reich um, was actually accidentally um, turned off because every night our IT support um, reboots our computers and, you know, it, it makes sure, you know, we, we want to make sure that all of our IT is up to date and running for the next day. He is in New York time, so we are a little bit ahead um, his time. So um, I we do have a couple of questions though from the audience. So um, Kendra, if would you like to go ahead and um, um, questions? Yes. Sure, I can certainly go ahead and, and start addressing some of those questions. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and start with with the first question, it looks like we have one that says, um, why did you choose a DSO over going into private practice? For, oh. for, me, okay. for me, um, personally, um, I worked in private practice. Um, I've been a dental assistant since I was 16 and I worked all the way through even in dental school. And most of the doctors wanted you to have experience. And so they didn't really want to have you come straight out. And then also they could match the amount that um, Heartland was giving you also. I mean, Heartland Dental was giving you. So um, that plays a role because uh, my debt is very high. Uh, so you kind of need to make sure you make enough money. So in private practice, unless you are connected with a family member, it is harder to get into private practice with no experience. And that's what I ran into five years ago. Yeah, I was just going to... I was going to piggyback off of that, if that's okay. Um, so I know that the debt that I graduated with, I, I, the debt for dental school just keeps increasing. And a loan right now to go out and start your own practice is, you know, upwards of 750000 to a million dollars. And um, that's just really scary with the amount of loans that we have to take out because of dental school. Um, it was nice to know that I wasn't going to have any financial responsibility with Heartland. I could just come in. I knew that, you know, my very first after two weeks, I was going to receive a paycheck. Um, it was a locked in contract. Just that security blanket was just, and I had benefits that were going to be involved with that. I had paid vacation. Um, I had less lab fees, which is something if you're interviewing with other DSOs, there's just some minor things that you're going to figure out cost more money that Heartland gives as a discount. And 
Um, it was just all those things that added up that the DSO was absolutely right. And it gave me the opportunity to focus on, I could get as many CE credits as I wanted in that first year and I did not have to pay anything for them. And I think I can't even explain to you guys how, how huge that is. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Dr. Rice, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about about, no, you're okay. You're okay. Could you explain I don't to everybody what happened? <laughs> yeah, share with what, what had happened. Oh, so this is uh, actually, it w we'll make it into a positive. So Heartland has a, an Heartland Dental has a whole IT department and they can remote into your computer. And if I was running my own private practice, I guarantee you I would not know how to back up my servers and all of that. And nightly Heartland, and apparently right at nine o'clock Eastern time, shuts down all my computers and backs everything up. So that's why I disappeared for a second, but it actually shows how much more support Heartland actually gives. So, I, because I'm telling you, I would never be able to do that <laughs> on my own. That's awesome. Now there was a question that was that came from a student. Um, why did you choose a DSO over going into private practice? Um, so I, I, I heard the tail end of Dr. Nelson and what Dr. Finney were saying, and um, I had a very similar kind of reasoning between. So I didn't have a family member who was a dentist. And in this day and age that we're living, this is the trend of where dentistry is going. And it's a trend for a good reason. Um, so I would say access to having a, a fully functional office with, I have a cone beam in my office. Um, if I would open private practice, there's no way I would have a cone beam probably within 10, 15 years of my first go about it. I also have a digital intraoral scanner that Heartland has been rolling out to every office that they support. Um, again, these this is expensive equipment that has made dentistry for me fun and amazing, and I'm doing things that I wouldn't have ever thought I could, um, but at the same time, I would never have had the capital to invest into this. So um, all those positives were reasons to join Heartland rather than try and go at, go at it at my own. All right, guys, we actually have a few more questions that came through while you guys were answering that last one. So this one is particularly addressed to Dr. Nelson. It says, Dr. Nelson, are you involved in the hiring process for a full-time BA, or does Heartland handle that for you? They handle that for me. Um, so I let them know I have an opening, and then there's a team that um, screams everybody that applies before they even can come to meet for an interview so it's like i don't even have to worry about it it's kind of it helps out um one good thing though i have a practice manager that is trained to be able to step in when we do are short of help um we do have um well, business assistants that are floaters but they're so hard to find so um if you get one of those you kind of in find a way to have them join your team. But right now I don't have to worry about putting out an ad or um, trying to get someone to um, get interviews or get their resumes. They do that all for me. I just come to work and do what I love. Um, to, to piggyback off of that, like you said, they screen and then you still get final say. Like they would never hire somebody under your nose and say, all right, you're working with them. At least in my experience, I've gotten the final interview and I said, oh, that was a great candidate. Thank you. Or no, this one wasn't what I was looking for. So just also keep that in mind. It is ultimately as the doctor, um, mostly your input. Yes, and I, I definitely agree. I'm sorry. I definitely agree. Fine, go right ahead. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I had the last day. So and I will tell you, I've been here um, going on four years and I have been through almost maybe eight people. So I got the experience of how to know how to hire to. So that was a good thing because I do get the last say so instead of rushing it and you trying to really find that good fit. And sometimes they let you do that 30, 90 days thing and that helps out a little bit. So you do get the last say so. I definitely agree with that. And I was just going to say that um, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm I'm like a crazy doctor that has to be in control. So um, the the 
people screening at home office know that they have to send resumes, all resumes to my email. Um, cause I want to see everything. Cause I actually want to make that decision for myself and my office. Um, so it really is totally the doctor's preference. Yes. We have those resources at home office and I love my doctor recruiter and she knows that I just like it a particular way. So as soon as she gets those screen interviews, she sends it right to me. Um, but I'm in very, so I, play a huge role in the hiring process from the time that they that Heartland receives their resume to the time that they come into the office um, so just know you're as involved as you want to be as much or as little and Heartland has total respect for for you as the doctor in that process Thanks so much, guys. We're, we've got just a slew of questions in here, so sit tight while we make our way through. Everyone's got really great questions for us all. So the next question is, for those who did residency, did you think it was necessary, or do you think you could have went straight into Heartland because of their support? I'll jump in on that one, if you don't mind. Um, so I was thinking of residency as necessary because I didn't know what Heartland had to offer. Now, looking back, I would never change my residency because I loved the hospital experience and this other experience outside of dental that really made me a better doctor. Um, but I do not, now that I've been with Heartland and seeing the support and education, I would tell my younger self, you don't need to do the residency if you don't want to. I would still want to because of these other factors. But looking back, when I, I did not feel confident coming out of dental school clinic technically um, or leadership wise, to be honest with you. Um, so the, the residency was a requirement for me, but um, I would tell my younger self, go for Heartland without a residency if, if you're not gung ho on a residency. And I have to agree. Um, I mainly wanted it because I wanted it for myself and I wanted to have that experience to work because St. Elizabeth was the only one I really wanted to go to um, and it was because of the mental and I knew if I came back to my hometown, I had a lot of mental um, illness in the area so I knew I wanted to be able to treat that but I definitely will say that the support like doctors talked about, I mean you coming in doing root canals, where do you see that done? Molar root canals. So, um, definitely the support is here at um, Heartland Dental. All right, this next question kind of piggybacks off of that as well. How was the transition from dental school to residency and then to Heartland? Or for Dr. Finney, how was the, res how was the transition from dental school right into the Heartland dental setting? Were there any growing pains during that movement? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm sorry to laugh, but um, yes, yeah, yeah. And all I can say to that is I know in dental school, you see maybe one patient in the morning and one patient in the afternoon, or maybe if you're lucky, you get up to like four patients, but you know, you get two to four hours per patient. Um, yeah, no, that's just, that's just not the case. And it's, it's good in a sense because dental school doesn't push you enough to get out of your comfort zone. Um, Again, we don't have to work with hygienists. You don't really get to work with dental assistants. So now you have this team, this network behind you. I mean, my I'm in a state where I have expanded function dental assistants. So they restore all my fillings. They, you know, see all my crowns, um, take all my impressions. So I'm so blessed to be able to utilize them in that way. Um, so my personal recommendation to you all is utilize your team understand that most of them have been doing this longer than you've been doing it so embrace that understand that the hygienists you know they know what they're doing going into those uh, hygiene exams and talking with those patients so help build that relationship up they will help kind of guide you and show you and kind of push you a little bit i mean i remember the first week i'd be like i can't do this i can't do this this is not 90 minutes is not enough time to get this crown done i cannot do this i cannot do this and your dental assistant will just look at you and be like you got it and and you just have to really trust yourself and just know um and the good part about that is heartland did not come in saying okay you have to see you have to do a crown in 90 minutes dr finney it was truly they sat down with me and just asked me how long they thought it was going to take me to do each of the procedures and so I really got to kind of 
tell them the way I wanted my schedule to be ran. And then slowly you'll learn very quickly, okay, I can move much faster than I thought. And so, yes, it is a huge learning transition, but it's, it's exciting and it's fun. And you'll look back at yourself in a year after graduation and be like, Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm not the same clinician. <laughs> um, just a quick personal note. So my transition to residency was pretty smooth because I was still in St. Louis. I knew the area super well. Um, residency, they also are used to having people coming out of dental school. They transition you pretty well. Um, of course, there's when you're in the operating room intubating somebody in a hospital, it's a nerve wracking thing, but it makes you grow. Um, to be perfectly frank with everybody, when I signed the contract, I was super excited. I'm moving to New York. My dreams are being fulfilled. Uh, about a month before I was going to move, I I broke down. Um, very scared all of a sudden, becoming doubting, self-doubt. It was the fear, but I've through Heartland, I actually learned it's fear of change that I was not good at handling. Um, I got to New York day one. This is going to be terrible. This is going to be terrible. Literally within a week, I was like, why did I waste a month of energy and time being scared, depressed, all this? Um, so it's it's natural to have a fear of change. I had a big fear of change. I um, mean, to be honest, Heartland grew me out of that. So now I'm looking forward to big things. I just moved to a new apartment in New York City and like rather than getting nervous, I'm excited about it. And I honestly attribute that to a lot of the growth that I've had because of Heartland. All right, we have two questions actually that came through about the doctor mastery program through Heartland. So out of the three of you, could one of you maybe address the doctor mastery program that maybe has the most experience with it um, and just kind of talk a little bit about that program for, for the viewers? So the doctor mastery program, um, they started that um, so that you have an opportunity to definitely um, receive money, um, but also getting, making sure you stay on top of your education, making sure that you continue to push yourself to grow. Um, it's a great program. Um, I was um, blessed to be able to join when they first started it. So right now, the first two years I was on track, I'm a little behind on this third year, but um, it's doable. Um, it's not something simple, neither. Um, if it was simple, again, everybody would do it. Um, it's an opportunity to stay on top of your education, because sometimes once you get um, a little older or get into dentistry for a while, you kind of get comfortable. So it's a way that they can push the doctors from being comfortable that have done 10 or 15 years and, okay, what can I do different? Um, but it's just a good opportunity to help grow your practice and not be okay with being stuck in the situation that you're in. So it's just a growth. It's not something you have to do. It doesn't hurt you if you do do it, um, but it's definitely something to help. Uh, for me, I know for student loans, that's why for some reason I signed up for it because um, I went to a private school. So um, like she said, my debt, my debt is over 400000 I don't mind sharing it. And um, <laughs> I will uh, love to have extra income to help pay for that. So it's a it's great opportunity. And just to, just to kind of piggyback, so what it is, is it's basically, it's supposed to be a five-year track, but again, it's kind of, um, if you do get off course, like I know for for female dentists, if, if you decide to have children and you need to go on maternity leave or something, they kind of extend it for you. But essentially, it was designed to be a five-year program where each year you have to start, you have to hit certain criteria as far as continuing education, as far as profitability for your office. Um, expanding and like adding another doctor or hours or anything that that might look like. And it's going to be all um, customized to your office. And you eventually will pick a path of kind of what you want to continue to grow in. So there's like uh, endo is one path, surgery is one path, ortho is one path, um, aesthetics is one path. So you really kind of get to dive into what you determine is like your niche in dentistry and Heartland just helps guide you to be like okay we're gonna make this route for you so not only are you expanding your knowledge and your skills on the 
the part of dentistry that you love, but you're also going to be rewarded at the end. Um, one, your office is going to become more profitable just because you're learning more and you're, you're just becoming braver and smarter when it comes to being a dentist. And then two, there is a reward from Heartland. If you can hit all those criteria at the end, there is a reward involved from them. And I mean, I know for all of us who has debt, that's just a huge incentive right there. All right, so this question, if, if Kathy, if you also have some additional information you want to offer, but we'll ask the, the dentist first. Um, if a student is interested in exploring an opportunity with a DSO, what's the timeline for applying? Or rather, how did you as a doctor navigate that timeline for applying to make sure that you're doing what you need to do each year to be recruited by the right DSO? So um, I my timeline was uh, I, I re I would say the, the, the key is be proactive. Um, don't sit around waiting, say, oh, I hope they see my name, this, this, or this. Say, I've researched you. Um, reach out to their recruiters. Uh, most DSOs, at least I know for sure, Heartland Dental um, has recruiters across the country um, always looking for good candidates. So if you feel like you're interested in it and you feel like you're one of the things in Heartland, they're looking for open, positive, and flexible. Um, if you feel like you can match those criteria, I was proactive and reached out to my recruiter um, and the ball started rolling. I think I reached out to him at the end of March, early April. My residency finished in July. Um, I had a site visit, I believe in June. Um, and we had contracts signed by um, early July, and I started in end of August was my time frame. And um, I started, I signed my contract in December of my fourth year. Um, I went on a site there. So what I'd recommend to all of you, I actually am one of the doctors that got to work with Heartland's launch program. So I would encourage all of you um, future doctors to apply to try to go to that launch program. It's um, in the summertime and it's generally for D3s and D4s. And it's a really good opportunity for you guys to one, get CE credit to just kind of get to see what Heartland is about. Um, it's not even necessarily pushing Heartland as much as it is just pushing um, different leadership courses. Um, you kind of get wine and dine for a weekend, but you just get the opportunity to really see what it's like and at those at that event, you can kind of start to ask questions about, hey, I'm interested in practicing in this location. You know, what's what might be available? They'll get you in touch with the correct recruiter at that point. So, I mean, all the way into your third and, and start of your fourth year, you can start these conversations. Harlan will never say no. They're, they're gonna help you just through that process on um, making sure you can go see an office, make sure you can, like they know you're interested. So I would say the earlier, the better. No, I have to agree. Um, I will Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, Kathy. Go ahead. So I was going to say, as part of the campus recruiting team, uh, there are seven of us that's across the country. I cover the West Coast region, um, but whoever had sent out that um, that message, wherever you're located, let's say you're in Florida, we do have a campus recruiter that is designated for your region. Um, you know, reach out to them, just kind of like what Dr. Reich was talking about. Be very proactive, even if you're a D1 or a D2, um, attend our lunch and learns that we're hosting all the time at your campuses. Um, I think my information will be um, put out on at the very end, I'm not quite sure. If not, maybe Kendra, you can send that information out and then I can forward you over to the proper campus recruiter um, for your university or for your school. Um, and then from there, obviously, if you're in your, D, your, your D4 right now and you're really looking to um, move to a certain location, we will connect you to the proper regional doctor that oversees that particular region that you're you're looking into getting into. So, hope that helps. Yeah. So, in the email that will accompany the post webinar survey and recording, there is all of the contact details from the Heartland Dental team that will give you access to how to navigate contacting Kathy. Um, and then as we close out the presentation today, we'll actually have all of the doctors and their emails published as well. So if anyone has a question for someone, 
they can ask and you know there's there's an open open stream of communication from everyone on today's webinar and and i'm not too far removed from dental school remembering that feeling of what am i going to do next so please if you do have questions i'm sure for dr finney or dr nelson or myself feel free to shoot us an email we'd be happy to talk to you yeah, so as we kind of close out tonight's webinar, I will ask one final question. Um, when you applied and were offered the job for very, or excuse me, did you apply and were offered a job at various DSOs? If yes, why did you choose Heartland over other DSOs? I was, I was Heartland through and through. Uh, once I, I'm from St. Louis, Effingham's only an hour outside. Once I had gotten into the system, researched about it, talked to that one of my mentor doctors who had been in Heartland, um, and then talking to Dr. Workman personally, I, I was I was comfortable with my decision. But I, in all honesty, they, they were the only ones that I was looking into at the time. And for me, um, I didn't even. No, I, to tell you the truth, I, I'm from my hometown, Danville, Illinois, and I didn't even know Heartland existed in our um, in our town. And that's good to know because other um, DSOs, you know if they're local, um, if they're there. Um, so that's good. That makes it seem like it's your office, like I said. So um, I waited too long. I will say get on it early. Um, I probably reached out about two months trying to find where I might go next. And I was offered two different positions in my same hometown. And the thing that pushed me over to pick Heartland Dental was the support. Um, and then how when I came, like you could really see how everybody, the employees really interact and had a good time with each other. And um, you can see that it was Dr. Led, um, where the other office, I just didn't feel that. I felt like, oh, you're going to be the second doctor and you're only going to do the stuff I don't want to do. I mean, they straightforward and said it. And I'm like, ah, that ain't for me. Um, so um, it's just the opportunity that I had and I was exposed to. So um, that kind of pushed me over to pick on Heartland Dental um, over my other one. Yeah, and I kind of, um, I did interview with some other DSOs just to get the feel of what it was like. I pretty much was biased towards Heartland just because I'd worked for them before. So I thought I knew for sure I was going to go with Heartland, but I do encourage everyone to talk and visit um, with other DSOs because at the end of the day, you know, we work very, very hard and you have to be happy where you are. So um, making sure that you're comfortable with the office and the area and that you you just you're understanding everything that you're you're signing up for. Um, with that being said, there are going to be days that are rough. And but this is a this is a profession that you learn and you grow from each and every day. So. Uh, any career that you guys decide, any um, job opportunity you guys decide to go into, whether it be residency, private practice, associateship, or DSO, or public health, just know that there's there's pros and cons with everything. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to love what you do. I love going into work. I love my team. Um, and that was a camaraderie that I, I know doesn't exist everywhere. And Heartland is the reason that I have that and um, it's so very special. I can't imagine ever walking away. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Dr. Finney, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Reich, thank you all for taking the time tonight away from families, away from patients and speaking with our members. We just so very much appreciate it. A special call out to Kathy and all of the dental recruiters like she mentioned across the country. They're there to help and they're eager to place you um, in offices where you will have a very similar experience. I'm certain that the three doctors had shared with you tonight. Um, we just wanted to say that um, at the end of this presentation, you'll be sent an email. Um, it'll have a survey, which will be really helpful to make sure that when we put on future presentations, we're meeting your objectives and you know, making sure we're delivering the right content. Um, it will also have that information about how to reach out to Heartland for recruiting opportunities. 
And like all the doctors said tonight, you can never start too early. So start building that relationship with your local Heartland recruiter and make sure they know that you're interested. Um, and again, thanks so much for joining us tonight and enjoy the rest of your week and into the holiday weekend. Good luck out there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.